Well, the curtains closed for generation two. Our matriarch, Autumn Kilo, his twin brother, Ezra Volkov, was with his high school sweetheart and their two sons, living in San Michuno. Her younger sister, Nicole Vitor, who she barely talks to anymore, was spending eternity with her husband, Caleb Vitor, in Forgotten Hollow. Edward Volkov was happily married to his wife, Hilary. The young lovers living with their four beautiful kids in San Sequoia. Clint was somewhere in the world, grieving losing both of his families and her baby sister sister, Renesmee Volkov, had just left with her boyfriend, Dexter Kibo, to begin a new life in Sulani. Her mom Alexis is dead. She was estranged from her father Christopher. And though Autumn would label her life alongside her wife Shanna and their three kids as a beautiful one, as a life she always dreamed of, she couldn't help but feel despair as she continued working on her kids' treehouse. Her childhood was officially gone, gone forever. Life moves quick like that, and her daughter, our heir Aurora Kialoha, couldn't help but think about the delicacy of life as well. It finally sank in what happened to her uncle Zayden Kibo. Death was so incredibly scary, and the more she thought about it, the more she felt sick to her stomach. She wanted to live forever. She had to distract herself, so she headed upstairs to her bedroom and browsed the internet, Taking an interest in the Simcopedia pages of the celebrities she'd seen in the movies she'd been watching. The late Judith Ward and Brittany Cho, the elderly Vanessa Jang, she tried to prevent herself from waking her sister Oasis up as she became excited. She researched their lives and careers. Overwhelmed with all the work they've done, creating a mental list of their films she just needed to watch, and as she spent her night browsing, Aurora had made a decision, just like her mother Autumn had. Though it was the middle of the night, she decided to go to one place she could to gain comfort, her mother Alexis Volkov's and son River Kilo's graves. She felt terrible for not visiting them again sooner, but she could see that both graves were well taken care of, flowers from past visitors scattered about. Though these final resting places of her beloved family members brought her pain, they also brought her peace. She knew Alexis had lived a great life, and she knew that River never had to enter a world full of suffering. She missed her mom Alexis dearly, and despite never getting to meet baby River, she missed him too, just in a different way. She missed how she never got the chance to know her son. After spending an hour crying and reminiscing about the past, Autumn decided to calm herself down with a stroll throughout the tiny island the cemetery rested upon. But through the solitude, she couldn't help but notice the distant cries of what seemed to be a puppy. And that's when she noticed an abandoned pet cemetery. Perhaps she was just hearing things, but as she subconsciously followed the noise, she realized what she was hearing wasn't a ghost, but an actual puppy, all by its lonesome in the cemetery. My goodness, she thought to herself, what a cute little thing, what on earth was it doing here all alone? She approached the small creature, letting it know that she was a friend, and slowly, but surely, the poor, homeless puppy began to warm up to her. It looked to be a golden retriever, and it was a girl. Autumn couldn't help but immediately fall in love. She was so sweet, gentle, and loving. You know, growing up, she always did wonder what having a pet would be like. Probably way more peaceful than having a bunch of rampaging werewolves running amok in the house, and since she didn't see or hear the litter the dog came from, Autumn thought to herself. Maybe she should take this little one home with her. It didn't take long for the puppy to convince her. Autumn knew she'd be a great addition to the family. So she grabbed the little golden retriever and contemplated a name, deciding to name her Tatum Tate for short, after someone else she once loved and lost. It was so eerie. It was like someone heard her pain and led her to Tatum to help ease it. Maybe someone really was watching over her, Autumn thought to herself. 
Once Autumn arrived back home to Evergreen Harbor, she set her new friend Tatum down and called her family to come to the living room. She brought home a stray puppy. Shanna had almost forgotten how big her wife's heart was. Sage thought the little thing was so cute, but he thought he was much cuter. Keep it classy, Michael Jackson. Oasis made haste the moment she heard the puppy in the house. Oh my god, it was so, so cute. With her animal whisperer trait, she knew the two of them would be the best of friends. Aurora came downstairs next, and just like her siblings were, she was in awe of her newest furry friend. But Oasis was definitely the most obsessed with the little fur ball, immediately offering friendship and asking for a song. Little Tatum was tired after making all these new friends and adjusting to her new home, so right before she decided to nap on the comfy bathroom floor, she took one last liking to Voldemar, who gave her a ball to play with. It didn't look like she would be using it anytime soon though. Shanna went outside to talk with her wife, who was back to working on her kid's treehouse. She was getting in as much work as possible, because in just a few short hours, she would be catching a flight to San Michuno for a work trip, meeting with some fellow civil designers from the city to discuss eco-friendliness. But before she goes, Shantum felt like they needed to have a talk. Autumn wanted to know if Shanna was really comfortable with her leaving for the next few days, her brother just died, and she wanted to be there for her as much as she could, but Shanna didn't think that was necessary, she was fine really, Autumn was excelling in her career, and she didn't want to get in the way of that. Plus, if she gets too sad, she can just drink a potion of emotional stability. Autumn didn't want her wife abusing potions, but Shanna promised she wouldn't. She insisted on Autumn going, her and the kids will be fine, she could help Sage with training. Now that he was back to being a C student, and she felt that it was finally time for her to have that talk with Aurora, she will be plenty occupied. Shanna didn't want to talk about her brother anymore, so instead, she raised a toast to Autumn Autumn's work trip, her passion for civil design, and what the next chapter of her career brings her. She was so proud of her and would miss her so much. This would be their longest time apart from each other since they got married. Autumn was really going to miss her too. I mean, maybe she could come with her if she wanted. They can trust Sage and Voldemar alone with the twins, right? They both laughed, knowing the answer was no. Sage, hell to the nah. But yes, maybe they should plan a little couple's trip after this, just the two of them. What in the hell? Am I tripping? Or was that Addison Chopra paying the Kilo his a visit? But Shantum were a little too preoccupied to even notice. After macking on her wife for all of Evergreen Harbor to see, Autumn said goodbye to all of her kids. Voldemar and Tatum grabbed her suitcase and was off to the airport to catch her flight to San Michuno, hoping that this trip would be well worth it in the end. Oh, my. Courtney, this is a fancy-ass hotel. Autumn had never been somewhere so upscale and luxurious, but she was starving from the horrid plane ride snacks. So she quickly checked herself into the hotel and made her way up to her room on the fourth floor. Wow, no elevators. Okay, so maybe the hotel ain't all that, but that's fine, because she was more than impressed with her room once she unlocked the door and settled in well, so neat and pretty. Autumn had to admit that, despite it being a work trip, she was grateful to have a free vacation. She was certainly going to take advantage of it. She wanted to visit a couple of museums, maybe go to a show, and she would be surprising her twin brother Ezra, his partner Mason, and her nephews Jock and Alexander. She hadn't seen them in a while and was so excited. She spruced herself up before heading to the downstairs restaurant, snagging herself a nice outdoor seat. Luckily, there was no one else here, so she basically had the place all to herself. She enjoyed some watching and admiring the atmosphere as she waited for her meal, the meal that her company credit card would be paying for. She was living a loner's dream. Maybe this trip won't be so bad after all. Back at home, Shanna ordered a family meeting to take place at 8 o'clock. The three Kilo her kids getting comfortable on the living room couch. Sage August Kiloha, where on earth did you get those apps from? 
on. Did you hee hee your way into the gym too? And Aurora's hair is brown because that's just what my game does. Anyways, Shanna called this family meeting because she had something important to talk about with all of them. Originally, both Autumn and Shanna were supposed to have this conversation with them, but things have been a bit chaotic, as they can all tell, and it slipped past them. Well, that was changing tonight, because Shanna announced to her kids that all of them were getting debit cards and saving accounts. With all of the money Autumn and Shanna were making from the money tree Alexis so kindly gifted our matriarch, they both decided it would be best to invest the money wisely. So, they opened up high yield savings accounts that each of the kids will have access to when they become young adults. Of course, Shanton still wanted the kids to have allowance from getting good grades and doing chores that they can use to buy whatever they wanted. So they also opened checking accounts for them. Sage's checking account has 1000 simoleons in it ready for him to use while the twins each have 500 every week. As long as they're good, Sage will get an additional 500 and the twins will get an additional 200. That rate going up once they're teenagers. <laughs> They want their kids to learn responsibility when it comes to spending money while also having the freedom to purchase their own items. And they thought this was a great way of doing so. Their debit cards are ready for use as of now. The kids were also stoked to have their own money. Sage's mind was racing as he thought of all of the things he could buy from the magic realm. Aurora thought of all the clothes she could buy that weren't from a thrift store and didn't make her look like a boy. And Oasis. Well. We don't really know her interests yet, do we? But Shanna told everybody to calm down. If they act up in any way, or their grades begin to slip, or they aren't using their money responsibly, she has no problem taking their debit cards away from them. And each kid understood. She took a few more minutes to grill them about financial responsibility before the family meeting was adjourned. The kids couldn't believe that had money waiting for them to spend. It was paradise. Oasis bonded with her new bestie Tate while Sage and Aurora talked in the jacuzzi. Voldemar joining them, Sage asked what Aurora was planning on spending her new wealth on the second she gets that card. She planned on buying some new clothes and shoes online. Maybe some personal perfume too, and makeup to experiment with. Voldemar was curious as to what he missed during the Kialoha family meeting. The kids filling him in about the money they were dripping in. Sage felt a tiny bit bad about Shannon not giving him any money. But Voldemar understood why. He was given some really fat life insurance checks from his parents' deaths. Well, that was a downer. Anyways, Aurora went ahead and asked Sage what he planned on spending his money on. And since Sage knew that Aurora wasn't informed on the family secret just yet, all he said was that he didn't know yet. But in reality, a new wand was calling his name. They spent some more time chatting and celebrating before Shanna texted Sage to come into the office so they could chat. Oh no, had she found out about him going in her lair? Luckily for him, she she hadn't, but she knows that she made a promise to Sage to start training with him again after he got his grades up, which he has, and she figured he was going to be up all night on another potion of plentiful needs, so if he wanted, they could spend the night training. It was like asking Olive Spectre if she wanted to murder her husband, of course he wanted more training. Down the ladder they headed, into the basement and into Shanna's spellcaster lair. She was so excited to show this place to her son for the first time. Yeah girl, he's totally never seen it before. They weren't going to practice any spells or make any potions just yet. She wanted Sage to start memorizing all the crystals, gems, and herbs by name and purpose. Him getting started as she cleaned. He went ahead and took everything in, knowing from his years of tome studying that this would be easy to get down. Once he told her he was done and she was done cleaning, Shanna then told her son to walk with her further away from the house. She wanted to tell him something and didn't want Aurora being able to hear it. Shanna needs Sage's help. She is so proud of how fast he's grown as a spellcaster. She needs him to set an example for Aurora and help her with training when she's unable to because tonight she would 
finally be telling Aurora about her spellcasting gift. She was so excited and so was Sage. He couldn't wait to kick her as a dueling and Shanna admitted that would be funny to see. He was more than happy to help and Shanna was glad to hear that because unbeknownst to Sage, she was going to need his help completing a few other tasks. One of which being a surprise for her sweet wife, Autumn Kiloha.